she actually dug a grave in her own house for herself. And she would go into the grave to pray, to remind herself. Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome one and all. Today with us we have Sister Nadia Kah. She is the chairwoman of the Board of Trustees at ICPC, the Islamic Center of Sayyid County. Uh, today we have a very important topic we want to talk about and uh, we have an important role model based on someone that a lot of people may not have heard of. So for some of you, this will actually blow your mind on what this person has actually accomplished in their lives. So this is Nadia, would you like to take the floor to give a little Jazakallah khair, thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Who I want to talk to you about today is Sayyida Nafisa bint al Hassan, who is one of the uh, ulama in uh, Islamic history and somebody that we may not hear that much about. Uh, she was born in Mecca in the 8th century. And when she was a little girl, she would go with her father to visit the shrine of the Prophet. And she would stay with her father in the masjid. So she absorbed a lot of what was going on during that time period. And then when she was about five years old, they moved to Medina. So while she was in Medina, before she reached the age of puberty, she had memorized the Quran. Wow, mashallah. And she had uh, really attained a lot of Islamic knowledge. So from a very, very early age, knowledge was very important to her. Uh, at some point when she got married, she moved to Egypt, where she spent the rest of her life. She moved with her husband to Egypt. She had two children. <laughs> you make me laugh. I have star over now. I was getting, I was getting there. At some point, she had moved to Egypt with her husband. She had two children there. And while she was in Egypt, she continued this tradition of knowledge and da'wah. And she became known in the community as a seeker of knowledge and someone who taught the Muslim community. Wow. And people would seek her out to ask her opinion and to sit and listen to lectures that she would give in the masjid, at her home. People would reach out to a Muslim woman to seek knowledge. Wow, mashallah. Yeah, you're saying wow because I feel like we've lost a lot exactly. of that. Exactly. That's my That's episode. our tradition. We have an absolutely revolutionary tradition that includes Muslim women at every point. Yeah. Uh, and this was uh, Sayyidah Nafisa. And in fact, uh, Imam al-Shafi'i, who is one of uh, the uh, theological traditions, is named after him. He established one of the uh, traditions theologically. Uh, everyone knows Imam al-Shafi'i. He was actually a student of Sayyidah Nafisa. No way. He was. Oh and my God. When I found that out, I said, Subhanallah, how far we are from that tradition, that rich tradition that we have uh, in our history, where somebody of Imam Shafi'i's stature would sit literally at the feet of Sayyidah Nafisa and listen to her. And she was genuinely one of the ulama. And it, it's amazing that we have that, uh, and, and we should learn about these kind of stories that we have in our, uh, in our tradition, in our uh, history, because it's something that's very rich and very powerful when you learn uh, stories wow. like that. It's, I don't see, I think it's mind blowing how everyone knows Imam al Shafi, and it's insane that this man that we derive all this knowledge from. We, li we, don't, we don't know who he got his knowledge from. Right. You know, that what made him the man today was a woman. And you know, why a Muslim is that? Power. Why, why do you think that is? Because I think we're I'm asking stuff. you a question now. As the host, I'm asking you. I'm throwing <laughs> it back at you. I think that uh, we, we have to get out of the mindset of a patriar patriarchal society, right? Yes. We, especially in Islam, when you look at how the Prophet Muhammad revolutionized the role of women, in Islam and allowed for, for women to be ulama and to be teachers and to fight in the battles with the Prophet ﷺ. This is the rich history that we have. So it allowed somebody like Sayyidah Nafisa to have that role in society that she has. Yeah. It's insane how time changes. Yeah. Uh, how things from the source, and how we, we need to go back to that. Exactly. That's what we should always strive for is to go back to that uh, that revolutionary period. 100%. Inshallah. So while we're on, so now that we understand a little bit about uh, Sister Nafisa, why don't you tell me what are some characteristics that really defined her, that like made her such as like such an inspiration? So there's two things that really stood out to me. The first thing is her depth of knowledge, the knowledge that she had about Islam, about Hadith, about Fiqh, 
uh, about the Quran and her ability to not just keep that knowledge to herself, but to share that knowledge with the people that she uh, was living amongst. So that was something that uh, she valued knowledge very, very much. Okay. And that's something that stood out to me. The other thing that really stood out to me was the depth of her devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a story, a very, very interesting story that I read that she taught all these classes and you know she taught all of these uh, people and she held all of these gatherings at her home. Uh, and when she was near the last of her days, when she felt that she had you know, grown old, she actually dug a grave in her own house for herself. And she would go into the grave to pray, to remind herself. I got goosebumps. Yeah, to remind, <laughs> it, it would, to remind herself of death, that death is imminent, no matter. And I think it was a way of her humbling herself because she had reached such a stature, everyone knew her, she had all this knowledge. But she wanted to humble herself. So that, yeah, it was very deep. It's her devotion. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it really was. It was something that um, really stood out to me. Was her devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because at the end of the day, we're all going to end up there. So that was something that she had um, the sense uh, to know that. And she would make her nawaf and she would make her sunnah in the, in the grave that she had dug for herself. Knowing that that's where she was going to be. Why is Nafisa such a role model for a Muslim woman today? So I would just correct the question a little bit and I would say she is a role model for a Muslim woman, but I think she's a role model for everybody, right? She's a role model for all Muslims nice. because of her, what I said before, of her, her love of knowledge, her love of passing that knowledge, her da'wah to the community, and her devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fact that she was a female definitely makes her a role model for our uh, Muslim youth, both male and female, and for, like I said, for the community in general, because it's somebody that the community didn't look at her as a female scholar or a male scholar, they just looked at her as a scholar, right? Somebody that they could uh, benefit from, and the Ummah benefited from her, truly benefited from her, alhamdulillah. truly benefited from her. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Sister Nadia, thank you so much. This, this has honestly been a, a huge eye-opener for me. I'm sure it's been a huge eye-opener for a lot of our audience today. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. For everyone watching, please remember that Sister Nadia just woke us up to realization that Muslim